Good afternoon. Let's deal with part five of the Bind Downloads Heresy Against the Trinity. And this one's again, each one gets worse and worse. He's a doozy. The hum comes up about two minutes in. Now listen to this. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 through 20. It says here, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. The Bible does teach that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay. We never denied that he, that he said that Jesus is the Son of God. We've never, we've never said that. He's accusing us, accusing him of not saying he's the Son of God. Now, he doesn't have the Son of God on his, on his, faith, his page and website. He has just the Son. We man, he says the Son of God. But watch the second part here. Absolutely. People say I reject that. That's not true. That's See, he always got to misrepresent what people say about him. You know, as for Watson, uh, 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 Chad Wilson, I think Wilson, uh, saying, oh, you deny He said, no, we know. We know he says he. He knows what he has, he has to say, you know, to squeak through, play games. But he's denying that Jesus Christ is God, the Son. That's what he's denying. It's coming up. Why? He's not God, the Son. See? That's the issue, people. And he'll come back to you say, I'm denying he's God, the uh, Son of God. No, we're not, we're not saying you, you deny that. We're saying he's denying he's God, the Son. He's the second person in the Trinity. You foul mouth liar. Hebrews 1.8, the Father, talking to the Son, calls the Son God. John 1.1, 1, 1, the Word was with God and the Word was God. Who became flesh? The Word. This man's insane. Why? Because the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible does say it. Just like the other things, it doesn't say millennium and rapture. But you use them, don't you? Because they're there. The concepts are there. God the Son is there. Because the Father calls the Son God. That means he's God the Son. He is the Son of God. He's God the Son. Who became the Son of God. See? He's God the Son who became the Son of God. When he was begotten as a Son, but he was the Word that became flesh. He's the second person of the Trinity. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who? Jesus. That's what it's talking about there. Yeah. That means it wasn't the Father's blood. It was Jesus' blood. God the Son's blood. He just contradicts what he's trying to sell you a couple of those video. That was the Father's blood. It wasn't the Father's blood. That was the Son's blood. Look at verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God. Yeah. Jesus Christ is the express image of the Father. He's going to read that. He was one thing. What are these verses proving anything? Like somehow he's proving something. He's just running around. This is this is impresses what this has done to his impresses little following that he uses scripture. None of the scripture proves anything in regards to what he's saying about Jesus Christ being the Father. The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. He's before all things. I mean, he had to be God. He didn't become Jesus Christ through his mom, the virgin, of a virgin. So he's all before all things. Who is he before all things? It's not the Father. See, he wants you to think it's the Father. No, that's the Son, the Word. Speaking of Jesus. Who was the word who became flesh. Jesus didn't pre-exist as Jesus. He was begotten in time. But as the word, he became flesh. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Like he's saying that this is like some deep stuff or something. Okay. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Okay, God the Father is in Jesus Christ. Yeah, and Jesus Christ is in the Father. He says that. And the Holy Spirit's in Jesus Christ, which means that the Father is on the present. Not the soul. He's on the present. He's everywhere. Not just in heaven. He's everywhere. Which contradicts what Brian is trying to say. 
and the Holy Spirit is everywhere. He just has the Holy Spirit omnipresent. And the Son, the Word, He's omnipresent. They have all the attributes of God. There are three who have the attributes of God. How do you know? Because in Jesus, all the fullness dwells. Well, the fullness because He's God in the flesh. We know He's indwelt by the Father and the Holy Spirit. That's not a question. But all the fullness dwells. Why? Because He is God Himself. He is the express image, as he's going to say, 1 3. He's the express image of the person of the Father, which means he is God in the flesh. He's not the Father, he's the Son. You say, well, no, it's, it's talking about a separate thing. Okay, then God's over here, and he says, every, in, in you, Jesus, there, everything, all the fullness dwells. Well, then what does that make God the Father if he's somehow separate? If he's somehow separate. He's a separate person. But he's not separate. You can't separate God. This guy just can't understand concepts. The guy is, you know, the guy is really stupid. It's just unbelievable how stupid this guy is. Jesus Christ. The problem. Verse 20. I mean, if you have opposed the Trinity, at least you should understand, uh, be able to conceptualize what the Trinitarians are saying. He came, he, 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 is, he, he, he either is so dishonest that he's twisting it to make sure that no one knows, or else he's just too stupid to know. One or the other. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, to, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Hmm. Here we go. It's back uh, to eleven in. Hmm. Like you some a found moment here. For the invisible things of the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Yeah, the attributes of God. Romans chapter one. Yeah. So invisible, God. Yeah, God is a spirit. He's invisible until he was begotten in time. When Jesus Christ came in the world, God was manifest in the flesh. Before that, he was a spirit. All three persons were a spirit. Verse 15. Talk about verse 13 there. His dear son, verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? So, yeah, the image. Because you see him now. You see this Jesus. You see, you're seeing the Father. Because he's the express image of the Father. He's God in flesh. But he's not the Father. Well, that's Jesus in his own image and thing. Yes, yeah, Jesus. The express image of the Father. Because he's God. He's not the Father. Jesus wasn't invisible when he was walking around here on the earth. Who is yeah, he's the express image of the Father. Who is invisible? And the Holy Spirit. He's the invisible God. The Father. Yeah. And who, was, who became the visible God? The Son. So you have an invisible God, and you have a visible God. <laughs> one's visible, one's invisible. Jesus Christ is the is the God in the flesh. When you see Jesus Christ, you see you're seeing God. And of course, when you see God, you see the other two persons of the Godhead because the they're, they're, they're equal, they're the same, the attributes are the same. Soul. No, so let me go back here. I mean, he calls the father the soul. Let me go back here. I was talking over to it. The father, the soul. See? That's 240. See? He calls the father the soul. See? This, he just goes in there. The father the soul. Because he's invisible. See? That was a mistake Ruckman made. He said, oh, you look at me. You never saw Peter Ruckman. No, we saw. We look at you. We saw Peter Ruckman. Oh, you never saw Peter Ruckman day in your life. You know? No, no. Peter Ruckman, you, the, the, the human body is integrated together. So you can't say, yeah, you're seeing me, but you're not really seeing me, you're seeing, you know, because you can't see the soul. No. So that works. You saw Jesus Christ, you saw God in the flesh. He was the image of the Father, because when you saw him, you saw everything that you needed to see about the Father. You see one, you see him all, as uh, Hoffman put it. This assertion, this is begging the question. He hasn't proven that the Father is the soul, but he keeps talking about it. And we scriptures that have nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. But he thinks somehow that reading scriptures, and this this is how his little cult can operate. 
the people who he's trying to impress are going to look at that and say, yeah, look at that. Wow, he's reading Colossians. Look at that. And look at this. He's not saying one word. And he's misstating what the Trinitarian, Trinitarians say. Then we don't say, we never say the separate. But there's one visible, and the other two are invisible. The Holy Spirit and the Father are invisible. So you got one, one person who became visible, who you can touch and handle and heal and speak to. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 14 through 16. Gives them some look. Ooh, this is going to be big, people. More good stuff. <laughs> yeah. But thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, with whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. What is it, this light here, which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see? It's talking about the soul of the Godhead. Where does it see soul? We're talking about God. He's talking about the nature of God. You cannot approach God. <laughs> God is unapproachable. So how do you get away to approach him? Through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying about the soul. What do you see soul there? It's about adding to scripture. One word about the soul, or the spirit, for that matter. God, the Father. Can't say one word about the soul. So, my God, how are you gonna approach God through the Mediator, Jesus Christ, the Man, Jesus Christ? That's how you approach the Father. That's how you pray to the Father. Now, right? You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't get to the Father unless you go through the Son. What is this guy talking about? That's what he's talking about there. That it he's not talking about the soul. He's not worried about the soul. He's talking about the, 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 the glory of God. No man can approach it except Jesus Christ. Is the invisible God. And the image of the invisible God is Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's the express image of the Father. Watch when he reads this next one, Hebrews 1 3. Look, him thinks he actually shown something. This is a study on a man who's gone off, off, off the cliff and a total heretic and has convinced himself of what he, he thinks is true and is going to lie and lie and lie about what is it. Hey, what about the soul there? He's talking about the greatness of God, the, 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 the immensity of God, the glory of God. You can, no man can approach it. Except Jesus Christ, because he is God. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past. Now listen to this. Watch, listen to this. This is amazing. The son of the fathers by the prophets hath in these, these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brother. Now who is he talking about there? The father. Still speaking with the Father, God, right? With sundry times and divers manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, having these their last days spoken unto us by his son, his son, God the Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom he made the worlds. So his son is the one who created everything. He wasn't born yet, he was the creator. It has to be God. <laughs> Jesus Christ wasn't was, wasn't in existence as a man until he was born. Who are we talking about there? The Word. Who, being the brightness of His glory, whose glory, the Father's glory, and the express image of His person, whose person, the Father's person. And now, what Brian is going to say is that nowhere the word "person" show up, and yet you have in Second Corinthians two ten. Where Christ is called a person in the person of Christ. So the Father's called an express image is called his person, and then Jesus Christ, he has a person. That's two right there. Two persons. You can't read. Greatness of his glory. What did we just read in First Timothy chapter six, verse sixteen? Dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see. Verse three of uh, 
Hebrews chapter 1, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Jesus is the image of the person of God the Father. That's right. That means Jesus Christ, that's another person. Jesus Christ is the express image of God the Father. He just said that. He just said that. Not the soul, the person of Jesus of the Father. And go back here. Jesus is the image of the person of God the Father, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. You say, well, okay, but then see, that proves that they're separate. Well, you got all kinds of problems. If oh, no, we don't got any problems. We don't got any problems. They are separate. Two separate persons. And Jesus Christ is sitting down waiting for his Davidic throne. So there are two different persons here involved. We don't have any problems at all, except in your own imagination. So you want to try to say that they're separate somehow. They got to stay they're separate. two different beings, two different persons. Number one, you have no scripture to support. The, I don't have any scripture. We just quoted it. Second Corinthians two ten. Look it up. The person of whatever you forget, forget the person of Jesus Christ. Here, Jesus Christ is expressed the image of the person of the Father. That's two persons. That anybody could count. The word persons in relation ah, to ah person. See that? See how he's playing the game? You got person mentioned in Hebrews 1 3, person of the Father. Then you got another person mentioned dealing with Christ. And he wants to say, well, the word persons isn't mentioned in the word in, into, into relation with the Godhead. You see how subtle that lie is? Two persons are being mentioned. Two persons are being discussed. But he wants you to believe because the word persons isn't referring to the Godhead. He wants you to ignore what it says in, in, in First Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 2.10 and in Hebrews 1.3. He wants you to ignore that. This liar. The Godhead. No scripture at all. But you have all kinds of other problems. Not many problems, Brian. You have real problems if you, you want to make the father the soul. That's a real problem because nowhere does the scripture say that. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Because Jesus Christ is God. Or does that leave God in the Holy Spirit? Where it leaves them is as God. <laughs> what do you mean where does it leave him? What, is it, what do you mean where does it leave him? Jesus Christ is God. When you see Jesus Christ, you're seeing God. Now, the other two members have been him, but they're on the present also. But the point is, is that when you see Jesus Christ, you're seeing the complete God in the flesh. It doesn't leave the Father and the Holy Spirit anywhere. It's just that they're God also. What, what does that do with anything? Where does it leave God the Father and God the Holy Spirit? What are you talking about? And you go, this guy's an idiot. That in him, he might have all the preeminence. In all yeah, preeminence, because he's, he's considered the, the, the one that's going to rule everything. So what, what are you talking about? First point, he's a preeminent. He's a preeminent in the universe because of the Trinitarian view of how the, the plan works. The father sends the son. The son obeys the father unto death. Then he's glorified. The Holy Spirit is sent to glorify the son. That's how the Trinitarian plan works. All things. What's that do for God the Father and the Holy Spirit? What do you mean does it go for God the Father and the Holy Spirit? Jesus Christ is sitting down now at the right hand of the Father. Until his enemies are made his footstool. Holy Spirit now is the one act of God. The third person is the one act of revealing God the Holy Spirit. I mean, or God the uh, the Son. As, as the Savior. They're still busy. Everyone's busy. You know about it. <laughs> God is still in his throne. And the Holy Spirit is operating. All three of them are God. But there's only one God. Three persons who are one God. They are operating as God, part of the plan. They have different op they have different functions within the plan. If they're separate persons. Separate persons? Well, they are separate persons. Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father, which means that he's not the Father. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. A five-year-old would know the difference of that. A five-year-old. And he gives a look. Unbelievable. Only idiots would follow this guy's little cult. That's why he's got to go off with YouTube. Real problem. Not a real problem. 
not a problem at all. Except for you got a problem because you got the soul to being the father. And the fact is, he's sitting at the right hand of the father. So how can it be a soul? He talks to the father. Oh, he's talking to a soul. You see, lost people don't understand. Lost that. people now, people. If you believe in the Trinity, you're lost. In the Godhead. Because understanding the Godhead is something that is spiritual. That's why Yeah, he's spiritual. He's a real spiritual giant. Thing to something pagan like the Trinity teaching. Remember, all the men in history have held to the Trinity. But Brian, Brian, he's spiritual. He's spiritual. All that, they were lost. They held to the, the Trinitarian view of God. Brian been shown the truth that the Father is the soul and the Holy Spirit is the spirit. And the, Jesus Christ is the body. He's not God's son. Because God's son doesn't show up in your King James Bible. And he's, there's not two persons. Because boys, persons don't show up. Even though person is used for Christ and person is used for Father. That's not you. Be careful what you believe. Yeah, you better be careful what you believe. You better be careful what you believe this guy. He's taking he's taking his followers right to hell. So we'll stop here, put this up.